A fundamental understanding of truth tables will help you understand what's going on inside of your if statement and if it will evaluate to true or if it will evaluate to false and execute this line down here. So let's hop over and take a look at some simple truth tables. Here I have created two truth tables, one on the left, which is the logical conjunction and, which we'll talk about first, and then we'll move on to the logical conjunction or. A logical conjunction and states that we have two variables, P and Q. And this is red on the right hand side, P and Q. So you'd have P, the up arrow, Q, and it's red as P and Q, and that's what it evaluates to. So if P is true and Q is true, then if we were to combine them, P and Q would be true. If we have a P that is true, but a Q that is false, well then the that would equate to a false representation in this truth table. So if the first expression, so if we go back to our code, if our first expression was true, yet our second expression was false, and we're using a logical and, this is an and operator, the, the ampersand ampersand means logical and, then the false would be executed because the second item here is false. We move on to the third line, if the first item is false, and the second item is true, it's still gonna be false because in order to get a true value, we need both of them to be true. So back to the code, this one at this point would be false and this one would be true. If we were to and these together, it would not equate to true, so we would be executing the else statement down here. And lastly, if both the items are false, then of course, if we logically and them together, we're going to get a false statement. So back in the code, if both of these are false up here, this is false, and this statement is false, then of course it's gonna execute down here. Now on the other side of the fence, we have a logical conjunction or. Now this is operated in code, let's go back to the code here, and we change a or to be with two lines. And so that's gonna be a logical or. So what this says is here is this statement has to be true or this statement has to be true. And if either one of these are true, if, if this one's true or this one's true, then it's okay to continue on and execute this line of code. However, if both of them are false, well then it's gonna execute this false statement down here in the else. And so let's take a look at them. Again, we're using P and Q, and it's read as P or Q, and that's a that little V thing there, so it's supposed to be a down arrow. And so if P is true or Q is true, then of course the resulting truth would be true. If P is true and Q is false, well, we're still saying, hey, either one of these is fine, so let's go ahead and move forward. And that would be basically like saying, if this is true, then okay, we can continue. Or if this is true, that's that's okay, let's continue. Same thing here, if the first item in the evaluation is false, so P is false and Q, yet Q is true, then our logical or conjunction would equate to true. Meaning that, on back into the code, that if this is false, so this equates to false, so false, it's gonna go to the next item over here and it's going to return true. So it says, oh, I found a true here, which means I'm going to execute this line here. And lastly, we have the false or false. So if, a, if both of them are false, back in the code, so if this is false, or this is false, which means they're both false, means neither one of them are true, then it's gonna execute the else statement. There's one thing important to note is that these conditionals, when we use the logical operation or, or the logical operation and, are known as short circuiting, which means that if this operation here is false, it's just gonna skip this together. It's just gonna, it, what will happen is Cotton will say, oh, you want me to and these together, so I'm going to need this value, and I'm going to need this value. What it's gonna do is at runtime, it'll check, say, hey, is this false? Okay, I already know this is false, which means this whole statement's gonna be, in, is gonna equate to false because the first one's already false, and you're asking me to have both of them be true. So what you would then do is, Kotlin would then do is say, all right, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this. I'm gonna short circuit this because I know that there's no way and no reason for me to even run this code over here because I've already determined that this first piece is false and we need both of them to be true to, in order to continue. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have or, or this could be short circuited here. So for example, let's assume that this was true. So we're basically saying, uh, if this is true or this is true, print this statement right here. So what this would mean is Kotlin would short circuit. If this was true, it wouldn't even bother checking to see if this was true at all. So it would short circuit this entire operation. So all right, this is true. 
all right, cool. I'm not even going to worry about executing this statement over here. However, if this was false right here, it would say, okay, this is false. So I need to go check the next one because I'm going to logically or them and I'll check to see if this one is true. And it says, oh, this one's true. Okay, I'm going to use this. Now this could continue on as well. If you had, a, for example, we have another condition here, we might say my age uh, equals equals my name dot length. And so we can actually have three conditions here. So this one right here might equate to false. This one might equate to true. And if it does equate to true, it's going to skip the rest of the, the conditional here because we've already found a true and Kotlin knows, hey, we're just trying to or all of these together. And so understanding basic truth tables is a humongous help in understanding what's going to happen in your conditional statements.